Nikola Tesla, one of the main contributors to the invention of electricity, sort of. So therefore responsible for many modern day essential devices such as hair curlers, selfie toasters, and secret phone call microphones. Not only was his name inspiration for one of the fastest growing car manufacturers ever, he's also pretty much responsible for you being able to watch this video as well. However, did you know that he also dabbled in one of the cornerstones of civil engineering, fluid mechanics? Well, today we're going to be looking at one of his inventions and we're going to be putting it to the test to see if it can stop a mega tsunami from destroying a city. Yes, hello fellow engineers and welcome to City Skylines. And today we are not in Engitopia, no, we're back on this tsunami map. So we have a large area up here that's unbuilt at the moment. We've got the sea and then at the back here, there is a mega tsunami heading its way towards it. But first off, you might be wondering what is the invention? Well, you may have heard of the word valve before. These allow you to stop water, so there's like a gate valve, a ball valve, a plug valve, a globe valve, a needle valve, a pinch valve, a diaphragm valve, a butterfly valve. There's loads of different valves, and all of them have moving parts, which means they're, they're not too reliable. They will break over time, they might need maintenance. Yeah, but Nikola Tesla came up with something called, this might surprise you, the Tesla valve. And the Tesla valve is a valve that has no moving parts, and I want to try and test that today but with a tsunami, so on a large scale. So first off, I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna, I'm gonna do something sacrilege. I'm gonna delete this bridge, even though <laughs> there is a train on it. Sorry, mate, you're about to be in trouble. But yeah, I want that whole train track gone yeah, because I need to build a seawall defense. So first up, we'll come down into this tool, the landscape and disasters tool. We're gonna use the level terrain tool. We're gonna click that button so it's a large brush. We're gonna click this two times so the brush is very strong. And basically, we're just gonna do a straight line across the entire shoreline like this. But very quickly, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that has been watching, liking, commenting on these tsunami videos they've actually been appearing in the trending videos list on youtube which is insane and as a small celebration you can now get 10 percent off everything my merch store at realcivilengineer.store using code tsunami so go grab a bridge review shirt and you'll be fully qualified to review bridges anyway let's get back to defending against this tsunami now the trouble is once you get to this end you'll see there is a river here now i think there's like a water spawning thing up here so if i were to cut that off i think the water will just come down and it will flood the city anyway so what i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna have to leave a little gap in my wall annoyingly uh, but i think that should be fine that should allow all this area to stay reasonably dry what i'm gonna do for for now, I'm just going to save the game. We're going to call it, we owe everything to Mr. Tesla. And then we're just going to press play. We're going to let the tsunami wave hit this. Hopefully we can see that we're the right height. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be close actually. Um, and what I want to do while that's going on, I want to build like a sort of channel up here. So although I want most of the waves to stop, uh, we do want a sort of like like a river tsunami going on. So if we if we just continue this wall, but we go upwards, I don't quite know how wide to go. I guess we'll do something like that to start. Well, then you can see at the bottom of my screen, the water is disappearing because the tsunami wave is nearly there. You can see actually our wall is a lot higher, so we might be okay. But yeah, before that hits, I am actually gonna, I'm gonna break the wall down here. If we just grab that level at the bottom, we should just be able to uh, yeah, there we go. Cut away the wall. And then what I'm hoping to see is the tsunami wave getting pushed back by these vertical walls, but then the main wave carrying on up there. And if all goes to plan, we will build a city at the end of this channel. And that's what we're going to be defending against. So the tsunami is about to hit. You can see the water is getting pushed upwards. Hopefully it won't go over the top. If it does, oh, it is just about going over the top. We may need to add a very small amount of height because yeah we have we have some water over there we don't want that but in the middle you can see that is very much continuing and this is the tsunami we want to stop unfortunately with this valve design we can't really stop an entire wave of tsunami but we can stop a small little channel's worth so i've added a bit of extra height i've added that thing there what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna extend up this way i actually i think we're gonna want this like really far i'm gonna want to go right to the end for those wondering who jelly fx is i think that's the person who made the mod so thank you for making this map i love a bit of a tsunami map but yeah i think i'm gonna have have to move the roads and railways a bit 
So we'll grab that. We will press delete. Oh no, look at all these cars. But yeah, we'll extend these flood walls all the way up. And basically we're just creating like a massive channel. Because uh, the thing with the test valve, it does, it does require space. It's not like a normal valve where there's no space issues. It sort of requires time to work. Right, and what I might do, I might do like a, like a sort of circular area where we can put the city. Now, one other thing I want to do, just because I'm like, I'm an engineer, aren't I? So I want to make this structure. Well, obviously this 90 degree bend it's not it's not very it's not very structurally sound this is just gonna like strengthen it up these are gonna be like little bracing piers so we use these in real life like all the time they sort of just help absorb the impact so yeah i think this is pretty much all set up so we can get our city in that end of the thing i guess we could call that the tip yeah and then we should all be good right so we've got some roads in i am gonna have to connect this to these main motorways and then i don't know can i tunnel through that i assume i can intrigued what that's gonna do hopefully Hopefully it won't cut through the thing. Oh, it doesn't. It actually puts... Wait, it puts a tunnel in, but it raises it up. That's that's random. Okay, whatever. So we've connected that one in. We'll just do the one in the opposite direction as well. All right, so that's that sorted. I'll probably do the same with the train line as well. So I guess that means we will need a train station in here. So we'll bung that there and head into there again. <laughs> Again, doing a raised tunnel. I don't know. I don't know what the game's trying to do there, if I'm honest. Anyway, then we'll come out this side and then connect up there. Jobs are good and we've got connections from the outside world to our city, which means we can just build a few bits and bobs in here. There's a bit. There's a bob. All right, so now we've got a city in. You can see that's building itself nicely there. So I guess we go back and then this is the phase one of the test. I think we've done enough engineering to know that these walls will deflect most of the tsunami and then the rest of it will head up here and it should destroy our city uh sorry people that are just moving in let's speed up the wave and see how it gets on so hopefully we should see deflections on either side boosh and boosh nice and then we've done it tall enough that no water is going over the top oh god oh goodness we we had a bit of an overspill on this side and meanwhile we have the main tsunami wave heading up the shaft and as you can see our city is definitely the target for this thing so if we watch from above you can see the tsunami is slowly making its way up. Thankfully, my editors have done a nice little time lapse, so you don't have to wait as long as I do. Not gonna lie though, quite intrigued to find out what's gonna happen to this when it hits the end. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're nearly there. So let's zoom in down here and see. Oh, the wave the wave has definitely shrunk. So that will go in. That will probably destroy most things. Quite intrigued to see what it's going to do to these tall buildings. Are they going to survive? Fair play. That is engineering at its finest. Um, but most of the other buildings completely, completely wrecked. Now, just quickly, I'm going to hit pause because I am a child. I just... <laughs> I just wanted to do that at the end. Sorry, sorry everyone. Uh, but anyway, you can sort of you can see the destruction. That's with that's with no valves, no anything. Uh, it's it's a not a mess, an absolute mess. So before we actually build the Tesla valve, let's do some other things because we're gonna we're going to be doing a bit of engineering in this one. Yes, I'm I can only apologise, but you may learn something or you may not. All right, so I've just loaded a previous save where the tsunami's up here, and what I want to show you is some engineering -y fluid mechanic stuff. So basically, we saw the water. It went from right to left along along the strip canal we've done and basically if we imagine that wave going from right to left we know that it sort of it went at like a constant speed that's because there's no there's no change in the side walls it's all just a straight line so if we imagine that speed if we were to add in something like that so that means the water that was this side is being forced down this funnel. And basically, in real life physics, as water would come along here, it would get squashed. And as it gets squashed, of course, it's going to speed up. So if you think about the wave coming along here, it will be going at a certain speed. And then when it starts to get narrower, it will go faster and faster, getting forced through there. Meaning that the wave on the right side of this should be a lot slower than the wave on the left side. Now, I have a feeling the physics of this game won't actually simulate water like that. Um, but let's do a little test and let's find out if what we expect to happen is going to happen. So you can see the tidal wave has sort of made it to here. We're going to see, hopefully, it speeds up if the simulation is right. I mean, obviously, the water is getting narrower and narrower. Does that mean, is it getting taller then? So you can see it's getting taller towards the edges. I'm actually quite intrigued as to what, what the game's doing here. So it's about to burst through the 
end, and it doesn't look like it's going any quicker. It sort of just got taller. But still, there comes the water out the end. It's I feel like it's definitely not moving any quicker. It's, it's about the same. Although that has actually somehow, like, all the water's disappeared. I don't understand where it's gone. That wave is tiny compared to what was on the other side. But anyway, the hydraulic theory is that that would make water worse on this side. It would make it faster. So if you're trying to make a valve, if you're trying to protect your city, this is the wrong way to do it. What if we were to do the opposite on this? So I've reloaded again the way the waves all the way back there. So doing the opposite would be doing this sort of thing. Now, if you try and imagine the tidal wave coming down here this time, you can see it's going to get stuck in the corners. Not ideal. And any water that does get through there, because it gets wider, if you think last time water getting narrower speeds up in velocity, as it comes this way and gets wider, the velocity is going to slow down. Now that's because like the water, rather than going straight ahead, it will spread out sideways because it takes the path of least resistance. So as it spreads out as well, it gets slower and slower. And in some cases, like in these top corners, the water could actually do a full loop and actually head back along this direction. And we'll watch to see how City Skyline water physics actually takes this. I'm assuming from last time it's literally going to do probably nothing. I imagine the speed will stay the same, uh, but presumably the, the tidal wave will go smaller and it will sort of do like a curved one, which is sort of realistic. We'll see what happens here. So, tidal wave going through the middle, as expected. The ones on the edges, they should get pushed back. And then this one that's coming through the middle, you can see it's getting wider. It's also getting lower, which is exactly what we expected. But that should affect the velocity. That should slow it down. And I'm not sure it's going to. But yeah, in terms of speed, because we've got this one down here, which obviously we haven't really affected, you can see where that is on the line. So unfortunately, the one up the top, it hasn't slowed down like it should have done. Uh, but at least it's lower, which is a good thing, I guess. Now, where does this stand in terms of the Tesla valve? Now, the Tesla valve it actually uses this principle, particularly where the water was spinning around there. And essentially, it's a bit of a, a bit of a improvement on this. So if we if we go back to what we had before, and basically where where we had our channel before, we then add another sort of wall thing. And to make this neater, I'm going to do this in flood walls because we know we can trim these back really nicely. All right, so then we have that. And then we're just going to do another flood wall behind. So like this first one, but it's going to be back here. But then we end up with something like this. And essentially, the thing with this one is this islandy part in the middle helps the, the water like rotate and spin back around. So the theory is if we were to draw an arrow, the water would come along here it would head down this way and then it would sort of turn around in here because all the deflections and things and come back out this way meaning any water coming along here will be sort of battered by the water being flung out of that direction and so if you have a series of these along your shaft <laughs> Sorry. then your water gets slowed down more and more each time. And essentially, that is what the Tesla valve is, but with a bit more finesse. So rather than this like pointy corner, it will be nice and curved. And I feel like if we do that in this game, that might actually help the old the topping over situation. It might help the water physics actually simulate this properly. So for now, let's see what happens with the water as it comes along here. I think as we saw last time, as the water hits the corner back there, it will fling up and probably over top. We'll have to see what happens. I feel like though, this could actually stop slash slow down the tsunami. Granted, not as accurately as in real life, but I feel like it still might work. So yeah, you can see the water there is getting flung up as it gets squished and squished, which is probably sort of accurate. Uh, however, you can actually see some of the water is moving from left to right along this channel. So I think it's sort of, sort of working. I mean, as before though, if we zoom out, we can see the actual, the speed of the tsunami hasn't slowed down at all. Now that isn't realistic. This should be like, way slow it should be back here still but considering there's a big hole down the middle that is a very very small tsunami compared to what it was on this side before it entered the channel so i think as another test what i might do i might actually make the tesla valve a bit more realistic i might add the curved wall there and see if that actually helps with the spillage fill all of that into the top level just so i can build my flood wall on top and i think we can do something like that which is a nice little curve any water coming down 
down here should be like flung around that way. So it will just trim back the the extra landscape that we don't need. Goodbye landscape. Then essentially you can see as the water would come down here, it's got a nice smooth curve so it will get forced back around and flung that direction slowing down any water that was coming along there. So we've started the simulation again. The tidal wave is heading up. It is really cool to look at. I love that the tidal wave like proper bounces back. It's like these, these boats were like, yeah, we missed the tidal wave, but actually, no, it's coming back for you guys. <laughs> My bad. I also love how impatient this traffic is over there. It's like, like each time the wave sort of carries on going like that direction, the traffic's like, oh, a little bit more room. Everyone move forward. And then some get swept away. And these guys are like, can't be having any space. <laughs> right, anyway, back to our Tesla valve. We What we're comparing this time is how this curve works at the bottom compared to the top that has no curve. How is that gonna work? It's spinning around. And look, you can see it's deflected. It's coming back, which means two waves are sort of meeting in the middle. And I think because this had more force. Yeah, look, the water's heading back out. Oh, fair play game. Is it working how I wanted it to? Maybe. Like compared to the top one, you can see that's definitely, there's way more flow coming out this side. All right, so that's pretty much done. I also, I want to try and get rid of these bits. Because basically you can see this slopey bit is a bit narrower. So if I just trim up to the flood walls, I think that'll be a fairer test as well. So now our water coming up here, it should work a bit better. Now a, a little bit more theory as well. Here we go again. Because you might be you might be wondering, you may have seen it in the simulation as well. You might be thinking, Matt, surely the water coming along here, as it heads along this way, surely it will just go down this one. And that's where we want the water to come out. Well, yes, it would. But if you remember, the wider the water, the slower it is. And you'll notice this mainstream is a lot wider than these narrow ones. So if you think about the water as it's going along here, it's going at a set speed. As it heads down there, because it's narrower, it will be forced to go faster. So the water will fling around there and it should, this is if this is designed properly, it should sort of fling out here before this main water, which is moving slower, because it hasn't been narrowed to speed up the velocity. As it's come along here, it should be forced out before it actually enters that bit. Now, let's see how this works. Um, and hopefully, if successful, we can add a few more of these along this trench and potentially save our city, which hasn't actually been built yet. So here we go then. Can the Tesla valve stop the tsunami? Uh, my main sort of point of interest this time is the first curves I've put in. Will they be enough to prevent the water spilling over the top? Ah, ish, ish. No, sort of. We definitely got a lot less spillage than usual, which is pretty good. But yeah, we can see along this one, the wave, it went down both of these, both of these shoots at the same speed, which wouldn't actually happen in real life. Uh, but it definitely gets deflected and then pushes water back, which, yeah, when you look at the size of the tsunami, it's tiny compared to like how big it was just the other side like this thing has absolutely annihilated that tsunami i feel like if we just add like another one or two of those valves then our city will definitely be saved i feel like at the moment there still is a bit too much water approaching so from the safety of the railway bridge let's see what's happening oh no cars are being washed away there's there is quite a bit of water actually is it enough to damage any buildings though i'm not actually sure although with nowhere to go this city is very much underwater okay i I think we can we can try and fix this a bit more then let's add another valve all right so here we have our new extended tesla valve here comes the tidal wave as well yeah, and i think this gives like a good impression like if you can see like just how big that tidal wave is and how big that gap is it's sort of like a third of the way through uh, you really would expect like a third of the wave to get up there but well, as we know, that is not the case. So let's see how this works this time. You can see the waves coming back each time they hit the, the curved parts. And as it enters the final test of valve, you can see there's there's actually there's a massive reduction in water. There's sort of a green dry stripe behind it. So yeah, I feel like this is this is a lot less water. We've we've done well, guys. We have done well. And to be fair, in a game that doesn't actually like this isn't this isn't a water physics simulation game. It's a blooming it's a blooming city builder with traffic and stuff. And I think considering that we can we can give the game a round of applause because despite the the velocity not being affected, just the fact the height of the wave has reduced this much, I think it shows the game's actually been pretty decent. And in terms of actually simulating water physics, uh, the software I used to use at my engineering firm was blooming expensive we're talking like thousands and thousands of pounds a year 
just to be able to use the software as like a license. So yeah, very complicated maths. I don't think you'd ever get a game that would be able to like simulate this like literally in real time. The, the simulations we used to run, sometimes they'd take like hours to run. But yeah, you can see as the water effects there, it's, it's a lot, it's sort of a lot less. But yeah, I feel like there's really not a lot of water about. You can see... Oh, some of the plants are getting watered, but that is about it. That is that is a hell of success. I don't even think I need to do the other valve. Look at this. <laughs> it's completely dry. So in answer to does a Tesla valve stop a tsunami? Yes, it does. Our city is completely saved. So I'll say peace, love and Tesla valves. I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers for watching. Bye.